China's rain-making wall. Building weather across 2,000 km of desert, northern China receives almost no rainfall. But across the Tibetan Plateau, they are building a 2,000-kilometer chain of metal towers that literally manufactures rain from thin air. Massive fuel-burning chambers create artificial clouds, generating 10 billion cubic meters of rainfall every year, enough to fill 4 million Olympic-sized swimming pools. Because you're about to discover how China is attempting to control the weather itself. Did you know northern China is home to 20% of the world's population, but has access to only 7% of global fresh water? Yes, barely any water in a region, with hundreds of millions of people. The mountains block moisture from reaching inland and the climate is so dry that desertification consumes 1,400 square miles annually, an area larger than Rhode Island disappearing every year. Each northern city gets five times less water than it needs. About 65% of Chinese cities face serious water shortages. In comparison, southern China has 80% of the country's water resources, while the north, where 64% of the population lives, struggles with chronic scarcity. The difference is staggering, and as we all know, Without water, there's no agriculture. Without agriculture, there's no food security. That's why in China, water is always a matter of survival. To survive, they tried everything. Since 1958, China has been firing 1.5 billion silver iodide rockets into clouds every year for traditional cloud seeding. But that system is random, temporary, and expensive. It requires existing clouds and can't create moisture from scratch. Effectiveness hovers around just 10 to 30%. Not nearly enough. The harsh truth is that moving water isn't the same as creating it. The South-North Water Transfer Project costs $62 billion, stretches 2,500 kilometers, and moves 45 billion cubic meters of water, yearly through massive canals. It's the world's largest water diversion system. But by 2020, even the South started experiencing shortages too, because you're just relocating existing supplies. The project displaced 330,000 people, and destroyed entire wetlands. China installed monitoring systems and tried to reduce waste. They built 87,000 dams nationwide, including the massive Three Gorges Dam. Agriculture switched to drip irrigation and moisture sensors, making every drop count. Nationwide efforts helped manage the crisis temporarily, but saving water only bought China some time. It couldn't stop the exploding demand of 1.4 billion people and growing cities. Just as America can't simply save gas without developing new energy sources, China realized they needed something radical. And the only option left was to manufacture water from the sky itself, to build a weather factory. After exhausting traditional approaches, Chinese scientists developed something unprecedented. If you can't move water and you can't save enough, you manufacture it. Starting in 2018, China began building a 2,000-kilometer chain of fuel-burning chambers across the Tibetan Plateau at 5,000-meter altitude. To put that distance in perspective, it's equivalent to driving from Los Angeles to Chicago. The location was chosen with precision. The Tibetan Plateau's extreme elevation creates natural updraft, and the chambers intercept moisture from Indian Ocean monsoons before it dissipates. The vision is breathtaking. Transform 350,000 square kilometers of desert, an area larger than Germany, into productive farmland target the Tengger, Badain Jaran, and Gobi Desert regions, create entirely new economic zones in previously uninhabitable areas. At the heart of this network are combustion chambers that burn solid fuel to generate massive heated columns, rising three to five kilometers into the atmosphere. The principle sounds simple. Heat creates updraft. Updraft condenses moisture. Moisture becomes clouds. But the scale is mind-blowing. Each chamber stands 10 meters tall with precision fuel control systems, spaced every 5 to 15 kilometers to create a continuous thermal wall. The big advantage of this system is that it creates rain where none existed before. The Chinese Academy of Sciences claims 10 billion cubic meters of additional rainfall annually, enough to irrigate 90,000 square kilometers of farmland or supply 500 million people with drinking water for an entire year. In contrast to the $62 billion canal system, this network costs only $5 to $8 billion to build. The most impressive part is the AI-powered control. Automated sensors adjust chamber intensity in real time based on atmospheric conditions, wind patterns, and humidity levels. 
It's like having a thermostat for the weather. This huge efficiency in cost and automation led China to bet everything on this system, viewing it as the ultimate solution to water scarcity. Today, the pilot program shows a 10 to 18% precipitation increase, meaning every cloud created is tied to fuel chambers, electricity, and monitoring satellites running day and night. Alongside the chambers, China built one 200 kilometers of new access roads across some of Earth's most challenging terrain. These all-weather highways reach chambers for fuel delivery and maintenance, with helipads positioned every 50 kilometers. Road construction alone through permafrost and unstable ground costs $2 to $3 billion. But aside from building the chambers, have you ever wondered how you keep them running? The system needs over 500,000 tons of solid fuel annually. 15 massive fuel depots were constructed, each storing 30,000 tons. 50 weather stations with real-time satellite uplink form a military-grade communication network. A dedicated supercomputer facility in Lhasa processes atmospheric data continuously. The monitoring infrastructure alone costs $800 million. Operating requires 2,000 permanent technical staff stationed at 15 base camps. Workers rotate on three-month shifts because altitude sickness makes longer deployments. Dangerous. Annual operating costs run $400 to $600 million, but that's sustainable compared to the value of the water produced. After solving rainmaking, China envisioned an even bigger transformation. The original plan projected that 90,000 square kilometers of new farmland could produce 50 million tons of grain annually, reducing imports by 30%. That's crop value worth $15 to $20 billion every year from land that was previously worthless desert. The pressure is even greater as climate change accelerates. Glaciers on the Tibetan Plateau are melting rapidly, with scientists predicting a 30% reduction in downstream water flow by 2050. To capitalize on this, China planned three new oasis cities, each designed for 500,000 residents in former desert. The construction phase creates 50,000 jobs. Permanent operations require 12,000 technical positions and 30,000 support jobs. High-speed rail extensions would connect these new economic zones. The rain walls would become an engineering wonder with 10 million visitors annually. No wonder economic planners called it China's key to food independence and the foundation for $50 billion annual GDP growth. The entire vision depends on chambers burning fuel 24 to 7 to manufacture clouds and rainfall where none existed before. Laying 2,000 kilometers of chambers is hard enough, but making them work reliably is even tougher. Since 2018, a pilot program with 500 chambers has been operational in Qinghai province. Each segment requires massive investment and coordination, but the results have been underwhelming. First, there's the performance gap. Over five years, researchers measured a 10 to 18% precipitation increase. Impressive, but far below the 50 to 100% increases initially claimed. The full 2,000 kilometer network has been quietly reduced to 1,200 kilometers in 2023 planning documents. Western climatologists estimate the realistic impact maximum at just 5 to 10 percent. Then there's the construction reality. The original 2025 completion date was pushed to 2030 and is now listed with an indefinite timeline. In 2023, three chambers were destroyed in unexpected storms. Permafrost instability proved worse than engineers predicted. Maintenance costs are running 400 percent higher than projections. Operating this massive system across brutal terrain with extreme weather is like building a river that flows uphill. Just keeping the fuel depots stocked requires thousands of trucks and workers. Official spending was frozen at 2022 levels as China's economic growth slowed. Construction halted during 2022-2023 COVID lockdowns. When the land-based rainmaking system triggered international alarm, both about water theft and ecosystem disruption, China realized it faced major diplomatic consequences. In 2023, neighboring countries began mobilizing against what they called atmospheric aggression. India filed formal protests with the UN and is planning countermeasures, including their own weather modification system. Bangladesh declared the project an existential threat for its 160 million people dependent on monsoons. Vietnam, Thailand, and Myanmar are forming a Mekong River Coalition for United Response. These countries fear China could steal their reign before it reaches them. Unlike fixed agricultural projects that take decades to impact neighbors, weather modification is immediate. When you manufacture clouds in one location, 
you're potentially removing moisture from somewhere else. Pakistan sees potential collaboration, but threatened nations are preparing military options if water flow drops. The significance of this conflict goes far beyond just water disputes. It creates a precedent for unilateral climate engineering that could destabilize the entire international system. The UN Environment Program notes that no regulatory framework exists for weather modification. A proposed weather modification treaty has stalled. In academic surveys, 78% of climatologists oppose unilateral weather modification. What's remarkable is that what China is attempting doesn't stop with rainmaking. Weather modification technology could be a global tool for fighting climate change. Imagine drought-stricken regions like Africa's Sahel, California's Central Valley, or Australia's Outback. All could use similar systems to manufacture precipitation and green their deserts. Saudi Arabia and the UAE have quietly offered $10 billion for the system design. Central Asian states like Turkmenistan and Tajikistan have expressed interest in technology transfer. If weather modification proves effective, artificial rain factories could become a global climate solution, bringing water to hundreds of millions. But there's a darker side. As of 2025, the system is only 35% complete and 65% behind schedule, with results underwhelming compared to initial promises. Inside the Chinese Communist Party, there's debate over continued funding. A leaked 2024 statement from a Beijing water official described it as a political project, not a practical solution. This is humanity's first attempt to rebuild weather systems at continental scale. The gamble cuts both ways. What if it actually works and China controls Asia's water supplies forever? Or does it fail catastrophically, causing ecosystem collapse and triggering international conflict? So what do you think? Is this an engineering marvel that could solve water scarcity or an environmental weapon threatening an entire continent? Could similar technology help drought-stricken regions around the world? Or does this prove we shouldn't try to control systems we don't fully understand? Leave a comment below and share your thoughts so we can discuss together.